As I pointed out earlier, mobile first has really taken hold, and Dreamweaver CS6 has moved solidly into the responsive web design movement with the fluid grid layouts that are new to the product. Instead of a site-wide media query file that imports a separate style sheet for each device, Dreamweaver creates all of these queries in a single style sheet, and the fluid grid layout process has a very heavy emphasis on mobile first. What you need to understand is this. These layouts are Dreamweaver's first kick at the can at this new way of doing things, and as such, there are a couple of issues that I will point out. So let's get started. To create a fluid grid layout, you can use the Start panel or select File, New Fluid Grid Layout. What this does is open a new addition to the new document dialog box. Now, what I'm going to do here is reset it to the, do the defaults because this is kind of where you're going to be. Along the top, you see that you are designing for a mobile screen that is 480 pixels wide, a tablet that's 768 pixels wide, and a desktop that is 1,232 pixels wide. The numbers under the names indicate the form factor. The numbers in the middle of each screen, which are the default values, by the way, indicate the number of columns in each grid. And the percentage right here under the mobile screen shows the width of the gutters as a percentage of the column width for the tablet and desktop screens, as well as the mobile screen. This is actually a very subtle clue of the shift to a mobile first approach, because the value set here in the mobile screen is used for all of the others. The minimum number of columns for each form factor is 2, and the maximum number that you can set is 24. For the gutter, the minimum value is 5%, and the maximum is 100%. The numbers at the bottom indicate the width of the layout grid. Now keep in mind that each grid has a horizontal padding, so the actual width will actually be slightly smaller than the width shown. The mobile grid is also not exactly correct. A lot of devices have a width of 320 pixels. So a 91% grid width, which contains padding, leaves a bit of extra room on the sides. If that's what you want, knock yourself out. But I'm going to change the value to 100% for each of the grids and change the desktop column value from 10 to 9. At the same time, I'm going to reduce the column width to about 15%. Again, just this is up to you. Now, the next time you open a fluid grid layout, you will see these values. If you want to change them back to the defaults, just click this button here, Reset to Default. If you're satisfied with your settings, click the Create button. And Dreamweaver will ask you where you want to save the CSS file that is about to be created. And also, you're going to have to give it a name. So I'm going to stick it in the Styles folder, and I'm just going to call it Fluid. Now this is a bit of an unexpected result, but as I said earlier, Dreamweaver is saving all of your media queries to one style sheet, and that is what you are creating here. When you click Save, Dreamweaver creates the Fluid Grid Layout page shown here. And this page contains a single div, which you can see at the top. The green shading you see indicates it is a layout div, and as you can see, there was already some dummy copy in the grid. The div is snapped to the grid, and it would be a huge mistake on your part to merely go ahead and start snapping divs to the grid. Your focus at this point is creating the structure and stacking the divs on top of each other. You can also see along the top of the page that a few files have been created. Boilerplate CSS is an adaptation of the HTML5 boilerplate which is an open source style sheet containing a number of styles you can use as your starting point to ensure your pages have a consistent look across browsers and devices. The next file, Fluid CSS, is the file where your media queries will reside. 
And respond.min.js is a minified version of the respond.js, which is a small JavaScript library that helps add support for media queries to older browsers such as older versions of Internet Explorer. Once you have your page visible, the next step is to save the page to the appropriate directory. Select File, Save As, navigate to the site's root directory, which I have here, and name the file index. Once you click OK or Save, you get an alert box telling you that Dreamweaver wants to copy the boilerplate CSS and the respondmin.js to the site. I'm going to save them to the site's styles folder. So I click on the little link right here. There's the styles folder and I'll just click open. Click copy and you can see that if I twirl down this styles folder the files are in there. To keep things moving forward I'm going to give the page a title. I'm going to call it Visit Xi'an. And then I will select the Fluid Grid div on the page. If you look at the Properties panel, it has been given the name of Div Layout Div 1, which really doesn't tell me a lot. I'm going to change the name to Header. So I just come down here to the ID and change it to Header. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is really important. If you look at the tag selector, you'll see the header div. Okay, I'm just going to uh, create that. There it is. This header div is actually located inside another div that has two classes, grid container and clear fix. Grid container is the parent container for the entire layout, and you play with it at your own peril. The clear fix class clears the floats that will be added to any side-by-side -side columns you may add. Now what we're going to do next is add a few more divs to this project. To do that, I click outside the header div, right in here, and make sure that the grid container div is showing. This tells you the div you are about to create is in the right place. If you're still unsure as to whether you're outside of the header div, simply select it and press the right arrow key on your keyboard. When you click the mouse, Dreamweaver automatically opens the layout category of the Insert panel. And you should notice a new tool right here, Insert Fluid Grid Layout Div Tag. Now I'm in the classic view, so your screen may be a bit different from mine, but this is what you're looking for right here. Click it. And you're going to be asked to start a new row. What you're essentially being asked here is this block level content that will stretch the whole width of the page and will the content that comes after it be put on a separate row. Be sure to select Start New Row for each new layout div you will be adding to a new page. I'm going to name this one Main and click OK. Now the next row that I'm going to add, which I'll call, which I'll call Slide, is actually not going to be one of these. It's actually going to slide in up beside the layout uh, div tag here for main. So again, I come in. I'm going to add a new layout div tag. I'm going to name it side and not start a new row. Click OK. And you'll notice something here. This content is now sort of indented and it hangs off the edge of the page. So what you have here is a visual clue that this is not a brand new row. I'm going to add another row, which I'll name footer. Once you've finished adding the divs, I want you to look at the right side of the magnification area in the status bar. These three icons indicate mobile, tablet, and desktop versions of the layout. Mobile is selected by default, and if you're going to create fluid grid layouts, it is extremely important that the divs get added and stacked up in the mobile layout. You can also navigate between the, th the layouts, as you can see, and you can also 
change the window size. So if you want mobile to be 320 by 240, you can see what that looks like. Now before we wrap up, let's add some content to the divs. In this case, I already have a simple HTML file inside the assets folder, and it already has just some simple, simple content for each div. And all I need is to, to do is to do what I've just done, sw switch to split view, open the content page, and copy the content from one page into the other. Now, here's a little technique that is kind of kind of interesting. Just copy this. You copy the code, and then we come back to the index HTML page, go back to split view, and there's my div ID header. So I'm just going to carefully select the area between the two divs and paste. Click refresh, and there's my div and I come back again just going to select the stuff I want come back to index and this is my second Div. And by doing this, what you're essentially doing is making sure that you're not putting content in the wrong place. And back, and I'm just going to grab the side. And there goes, the, here's the content for the side, again, between the div tags. Refresh, and you see it's in there. And finally, let's deal with the uh, footer. And if I refresh, I've got it going here. So I've got all the contents stacked up. You can see that everything is here. Now, if this green area is bothering you, you can always turn it off. It's right here. So it's the visual aids. And if you click it, you can actually turn off the fluid grid layout guides. And you can see how your content is flowing in. Now, if you open the uh, Fluid CSS, and I'm just going to go over to Code View here so you can get a clearer look at it, you get a better understanding of how Dreamweaver creates the Fluid Grid. It handles all of the complicated math for you. See, there's that four decimal places, along with the floats and the float clearings. The other thing you might want to do is to actually create a separate CSS style sheet for your custom styles. If a fluid grid layout sheet is littered with extra styles, you may have trouble adjusting your layouts if you later want to make changes. I won't be going into that in this series simply because I want to focus on process and technique. But still, I strongly advise all of you to preserve your sanity and create a separate style sheet for your custom styles. When you finish, Save the project. So I'm just going to come back to my split view and I'm going to save the project. So what I've done in this first video is to show you how to get started with a fluid grid layout. These things are a great way to start learning responsive web design and to start employing the mobile first concept, which is the heart of fluid grid layouts. As you've seen, there's a lot more to it than simply creating the layout and slapping in the content. You start by first selecting File New Fluid Grid Layout and setting the overall width, columns, and gutter widths for the mobile, tablet, and desktop layouts. When you save the page, Dreamweaver will copy two other files to your site. Once that is done, construct the page by stacking the divs in the mobile layout. In the next installment of this series, we'll review how layout divs are snapped to a fluid grid and how to manage the styles generated by this feature. 
The third part of this series will finish by looking at how images are added to a fluid grid layout. I'll see you there.